Back with Jake Butt. They got another good one in Eugene, Oregon coming up. We were talking about this a little bit with Joel, the matchup with Boise State. Ashton Genty, he ran for six touchdowns in their win over Georgia Southern. They scored 56 points in that game. I'm going to score 56 against Oregon's defense. We know how good they are. The real concern for the Ducks is offensively. How concerned are you about what we saw from Oregon and how equipped do you think they are to to put that in the rearview mirror. I'm not concerned. There was a number of teams that kind of looked a little shaky, especially early. It's it's week one, right. but you know you always hear the phrase the biggest jump is between week one and week two, and that's what I would expect to see. I was shocked because I, I look at Oregon with two great tackles, maybe two first round picks that out there at the edge. I know they're replacing their center, but you know we talk about the new four teams joining the Big Ten. You have to win in the trenches and 2.9 yards per carry versus Idaho. That's not going to cut it. Right. So uh, you got to go back and watch the tape. You got to look at it and say, man, I listened to D Dylan Gabriel talk. All the mistakes were self-inflicted, hmm. which is which is a positive. But they need to now correct it and put it on tape. I don't think you can. The, the recipe for success should be throwing the ball 49 times again this week. This is a team you should be able to gash a little bit because I know they scored 56. They also gave They should be 45. able to gash a ton of yeah. teams. No, I mean, I, they, they I are know. absolutely loaded. But, but I'm saying this is a team that gave up 45 points yeah. against a team that is considered middle of the road at best in the Sun Belt. Yes. So, so we shall see. Could be a track meet. It's per, perhaps fitting that we showed Hayward Field there. There you go. Could be, a, could be a track meet in Eugene. Uh, Cyhawk, Iowa, and Iowa State. This is a really good test to me. For Iowa, there was a lot of excitement about the Hawkeyes offense in week one, and, and I get it, right? They scored 40 points in the second half in particular. Kay McNamara looked great. Iowa State, there's excitement around this Cyclones mm -hmm. team coming into this year. They returned as much experience as anyone in the country. We know about the nature of this rivalry. Are you buying into Iowa's offense one week in? I am, and I know it was a tale of two halves last week, but we can't forget Kirk Ferentz isn't on the sideline. Again, it's week one, but as the game went on, they settled in, and I think what's important to remember is you have a healthy Cade McNamara. It was great to see him step up in the pocket and scramble, testing out those wheels a little bit. You got a healthy Luke Lachey, who's one of the best tight ends in the conference. They got him involved, and then they found a diamond in the rough in Reese Vanderzee. I think he was an, a, a, not even a top thousand recruit in high school football, right? He was a quarterback, and here he is at six foot four. Cade felt very comfortable throwing him the ball, and I, I, I get the opponent, but things on tape translate. Last year, they had trouble catching the ball at times. Last time, they had trouble imposing their will and being on the same page as an offensive line. It looked to me like fundamentally they had cleaned some things up offensively, which they'll need to carry over this week. Iowa State, thin at linebacker, lost a few guys there. They got to take advantage of that. Iowa State does have a lot of talent offensively. Rocco Beck is, is an underrated quarterback, but man, Iowa's defense appeared to be in midseason form. And he struggled so. last year versus this defense. I mean, this defense no is yeah. even better than last year, yes. and they're back to for forcing turnovers again, which is always tough. No, they're elite. I I'm really interested in Illinois and Kansas. I just think this is one of those sneaky games that maybe people aren't talking about all that much, and they should be. I loved Illinois in week one. Again, you consider the opponent, I know, Eastern Illinois. But to me, the run game, Caden Fagan, Aiden Lawfrey, those guys are going to be tough to stop. Yep. That was where they had a big drop off last year. Fagan got injured as a freshman. It felt like Luke Altmaier was in more control. But to me, the questions about Illinois were about the defense mm -hmm. coming into this year. Kansas is going to test you. I mean, Kansas had its way with Illinois last year when they played in Lawrence. To me, huge test against the Jayhawks. Everything you wanted to see from Illinois week one, they showed. And I understand the opponent. I understand the challenge this week. But they checked every box. You mentioned the offense. Checked the box. Much more balance. Altmaier looked comfortable. But then defensively, what I'm really excited to see is now that jump in year two for Aaron Henry. I think it was a steep learning yep. curve last year. It's different calling plays when Witherspoon and Sidney Brown aren't there. Now he has to, they have got to stop the run. Jaden Daniels is a running quarterback. It requires all 11 guys being on the same page. Can you stop the run without the law firm, right? Like all of a sudden you need guys playing team quality defense. The, the recipe for a Brett Bielema team is going to be always the same. Can you win in the trenches? Can you stop the run? And can that offense continue what they did last week, which is being balanced and controlling the clock? and keeping Jaden Daniels on the sidelines. Well, they couldn't stop Kansas with the law firm last year. They gave up seven and a half yards per play when they There's played the in Lawrence. Now, it's fair to point out Andy Colton-Nicky was the offensive coordinator. He's now at Penn State, so we'll see whether or not 
Kansas is able to continue that. Again, tough to gauge given the, the week one opponent for them.